This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. The Lord is in his holy temple at all the earth. Keep silence before him. Greetings to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to God's message from Evans Chapel United Methodist Church in Belzona, Mississippi. A church where everybody is somebody and Jesus is Lord. I'm so thankful for the opportunity to fellowship with each of you. With all the chaos in the world, it's a blessing to connect with all of our brothers and sisters in Christ. We are also blessed to include in our worship experience two other churches, Shady Grove United Methodist Church in Kilmichael, Mississippi, as well as my home church, D. Cell United Methodist Church in Greenwood, Mississippi. We're going to move on with our opening song, Praise Him by the New Jersey Mass Choir. David said in the 150th Psalm, 
indeed praise him by the new jersey mass choir let's go to god in prayer before we move to our message on today father god we just want to say thank you we thank you for being so good to us we thank you for all of the blessings you have bestowed upon us and lord we just thank you just for all of the just for being god all by yourself Lord, have mercy on us, Lord. Forgive us of all of our sins, Lord. Creating us clean hearts and renew a right spirit within us. Lord, rain down your blessings on all of your churches that have been established in your name, Lord. Touch every pastor, Lord, that has been anointed and ordained to lead your church, uh, during, especially during these trying times. Lord, give us the wisdom that we need in order that we can go out and be about your business to lead your church to be the uh, to be the churches that will be a light in all of our communities lord lord we ask that you would rain down your blessing on each community in the mississippi delta in the state of mississippi and all over this nation and world lord touch your people right now lord uh send down your Blessings on all these communities, Lord. Touch each political leader that's from the federal level, state, and local levels, Lord. That they, that they will lead your people in the direction that they need to go, especially as we deal with COVID-19, Lord. Lord, touch your people, Lord. Those who have been infected by it, heal them right now, this day, in the mighty name of Jesus. And those who has not been infected by you, Lord, put, protect us, Lord. Lord, from this virus, Lord. Lord, we know that, 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 that you are still in, in control, Lord, and we trust you, Lord. That in the end, everything will be all right, Lord. Lord, please, Lord, touch your people, Lord. Deliver us from COVID-19, Lord. Lord, I know that everything is in your hands and we, sh and we know that you have the power to do any and everything, Lord. And we trust that in the end, we will be delivered from COVID-19. Lord, we ask that you would uh, look over the sick and shut in of Evans Chapel, uh, Raspberry. Hell's Chapel, Lord. Not only in those churches, D Cell, Shady Grove, and every church, Lord, that has been established in your name. Look over their sick and shut in, Lord, and in prayer list, Lord. Lord, you know where each person stands in need of. Lord, we ask that you would just cover them by the blood of Jesus, Lord, that they will be healed and delivered and set free, Lord from whatever they are dealing with, Lord, sickness and any other things that they are dealing with, Lord. And Lord, we ask that you would, that you would uh, touch our president, Lord. Lord, we, 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 we need you right now to, that you would draw him closer to you in the mighty name of Jesus. And not only him, but all those individuals uh, who are going down the wrong path that's that's not pleasing in your sight, Lord. Lord, we ask that you uh, touch your people right now, that somebody this day will surrender their lives to you and accept you as Lord and Savior and follow you. Lord, we ask that you would anoint the scripture that there will be read and anoint the message that will be proclaimed to your people. 
These are the blessings we ask in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, and amen. Before we move on to our uh, message for today, I also want to acknowledge uh, this, uh, two, uh, two other churches that's joining in with us uh, for our worship experience. That's Raspberry United Methodist Church in Indianola as well as Hell's Chapel. United Methodist Church in Inverness, Mississippi. Amen, amen, and amen. We're going to go on. Uh, if you have your Bibles with you, turn with me to Matthew, the 14th chapter, verses 22 through 33. That's Matthew, the 14th chapter, verses 22 through 33. And I'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Amen, amen, and amen. And it reads, Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When the evening came, he was there alone, but by this time the boat battered by the waves was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came walking towards them on the sea. But when the disciples when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and beginning to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, you of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. May the Lord have special blessing to the reader, hearers, but more importantly, the doers of his divine word. Amen, amen, and amen. I will use as a theme for our message today, don't be afraid to get out of the boat. Don't be afraid to get out of the boat. My brothers and sisters, the story of Jesus walking on the waters follows the story of the feeding of the 5,000. And as they did then, they do once again. They try to find the resources within themselves to resolve the problem, but without success. Once again, these disciples learn that they need Jesus to save the situation and themselves. Again, we are picking up where we left off last week. You see, Jesus was tired. His disciples were tired. They had been grieving over John the Baptist's murder. And so they had tried to get away and be alone. They had gotten into their boat and sailed to a deserted place, but it did not work. The crowds had followed them, probably about ten to 15,000 people. And even though Jesus was consumed with grief, J Jesus still had compassion for them and healed those who were sick. Then when everyone was hungry, instead of sending the people, sending the people away, Jesus blessed what the disciples had, which is five loaves of bread and two fish. And everyone was fed. Now, Jesus was really, really tired. And looking at our text uh, today, verses 22 and 23 said, Immediately he made the disciples to get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When the evening came, he was there alone. You see, Jesus went up to the mountain by himself to pray to regain strength, and I will also presume, presume to mourn the death of John the Baptist. And we are told that evening came and Jesus was alone. 
Then sometimes in the wee hours of the morning, Jesus goes up, goes to catch up with the 12 disciples. In verse 24 of our text, it said, but by this time the boat battered by the waves was far from the land, for the wind was against them. You see, the disciples was having a pretty rough time right now. A violent storm was raging and they were being battered by the waves and the wind. They are far away from land. I don't know about you, my brothers and sisters, but I will be extremely frightened on their boat as well. We can talk about faith all we want, but if we get, them, if we get caught in a violent storm while on that boat, we would be fearful as well. That's because we are humans and we will not be sure if we will survive this storm or not. In verse 25 and 26 of our text, it says, In early in the morning, he came walking towards them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. According to this text, it was early in the morning. I would assume that it was before daylight. Imagine you see someone walking towards you on the water. Just like the disciples were terrified, we would be as well. Just like, just like the disciples, this will be also a new experience for us. The disciples said that it was a ghost. They were so, af they were so afraid until they cried out. They did not know who that person was. We will feel the same way if we saw someone walking on the water as well, especially in the middle of a violent storm while it was still dark early in the morning. Verses 27 through 29 of our text, it said, But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. As we see in our text, Jesus immediately told the disciples to not be afraid, because this is me, Jesus. Jesus understood their fear because they had never experienced anything like this. Jesus was demonstrating to the disciples again that he was the Son of God. This was a reminder to the disciples and to us that Jesus is always with us, even in the midst of the storm, especially the storms of life. Peter said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Jesus immediately told him to come on to him. For Peter, this was a moment of both a weakness and strength. He doubted but wanted to believe. He was fearful, but stepped out of the boat and into the storm towards Jesus. It took courage to walk on the water. In verse 30 and 31 of our text, it said, But when he noticed the strong, the strong wind, he became frightened and began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out of his hand and called him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? You see, my brothers and sisters, we see that Peter, unlike the other disciples, was walking on the water towards Jesus. You see, Peter was doing fine until he took his, eye, took his eyes off of Jesus and focused on the storm around him. You see, he temporarily lost sight of Jesus. As humans, when trials and tribulations come our way, we tend to take our focus from Jesus and be worried about the issues that we are dealing with. You see, Peter cried out for Jesus to save him. Jesus immediately reached out his hand to Peter and saved him. Jesus said, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Jesus wanted Peter as well as us to trust him no matter what we are dealing with. He wants us to trust him through the good times and the bad times. In verse 32 and 33 of our text, it said, When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. Just as Jesus has godly power over the waters, so he also has godly power over the wind. 
The disciples worship Jesus and acknowledge that he is the son of God. In closing, what is clear is that we are all called by Jesus to step out of our comfort zones and faith, even in the midst of troubled waters. What are your troubled waters? What storm do you see brewing around you? Are you hiding from them or are you stepping out into them in faith? What ministry is God calling you to do? Does the thought of it frighten you? Are you stepping out in faith anyway? That's the question that only you can ask. You see, my brothers and sisters, the key to faith and the fullness of life is that, G that Jesus offered is to follow Peter's examples and be willing to step out of the comfort and security of the boat and head into the troubled waters of the world to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. You see, my brothers and sisters, if Peter had not stepped out on faith and obeyed the call to walk on the water, then Peter would never have had a great opportunity to recognize Jesus and be recon and to be rescued by Jesus. If you want to be close to Jesus, you have to walk out on the sea, trusting and proving his promises through risk and adventure. My brothers and sisters, you see, getting out of the boat with Jesus is the most risky, most exciting, and most fulfilling way to live life to the fullest. And Jesus invites us to do just that. Yeah, it's not, it won't be easy, but it sure will be an exciting journey following Jesus. You see, my brothers and sisters, if you want to see a change in your life, get out of the boat and follow Jesus. If you want to see a change in the church, get out of the boat and follow Jesus. If you want to see a change in the community, get out of the boat and follow Jesus. If you want to see a change in the state, get out of the boat and follow Jesus. If you want to see change in the nation, get out of the boat and follow Jesus. If you want to see change in the world, get out of the boat and follow Jesus. If you want to see systemic racism dismantled, get out of the boat and follow Jesus. If you want to be healed spiritually, physically, and emotionally, get out of the boat and follow Jesus. If you want to go out and make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world, get out of the boat and follow Jesus. If anyone wants to obtain salvation, get out of the boat and follow Jesus. If you want to be delivered from whatever situation that you find yourself in, get out of the boat and follow Jesus. If your faith is shaken, get out of the boat and follow Jesus. If you want to be drawn closer to Jesus, get out of the boat and follow Jesus. If you want to move to the next level on this journey, get out of the boat and follow Jesus. If you want to do something that you've never been able to do, Get out of the boat and follow Jesus. And if you want to be a better man or woman, get out of the boat and follow Jesus. If you want to be empowered to be all that God wants you to do and be, get out of the boat and follow Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. The time has come where I offer an invitation to Christian discipleship. Will there be one that don't know Jesus and the pardon of your sin? Today is a good day. If you say, I don't know what I need to do, all you got to do is say, Lord, I surrender my life to you. I, yes, I am a sinner, and I give my whole entire life to you. And if you do that and you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, guess what? You are saved. And, and and if you feel like you're in bondage, just get out of the boat and follow Jesus. Jesus will take your hand, no matter what's going on in your life, no matter whatever storms of, on, that you're dealing with. Just if you keep your eyes on Jesus, everything will be all right. Will there be one that's ready to answer the call to discipleship? 
Let that be one. Jesus, looking forward to welcoming you with open arms. Will there be one? And why are you contemplating accepting the invitation to follow Jesus? You will now hear from Ms. Haley, Mahalia Jackson with the song, Just a Closer Walk with the by the late, great Mahalia Jackson. I thank God for each of you on today. And I just want to again acknowledge our uh, ch other churches that's joining in with us with Evans Chapel. That includes Raspberry and Indianola, Hell's Chapel in Inverness, Shady Grove in Kilmica, and Diesel in Greenwood. We thank God for each of them. To join in with us. We are all united in being disciples of Jesus Christ. And all of us are committed to go out and make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. 
My brothers and sisters, don't neglect to give your tithes and offerings to your local churches. If you want, if you want to send your financial blessings to Evans Chapel, please send them to Evans Chapel United Methodist Church, P.O. Box 773, Bell Zone in Mississippi, 39038. Again, it's P.O. Box 773, Bell Zone in Mississippi, 39038. Let's show love to each person because God continues to shower us with his love. Let's check on each other and pray for each other. And again, we thank God for each of you. Let's close for the benediction. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen, amen, and amen. Be blessed and enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.